Pat Leonard, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a great pleasure to be back uh, with, with Sudeti. It's always uh, great events, especially here in Brussels. Um, so the best thing about my book is that it's available for free outside uh, in the break, so you can get a free copy and I can sign it for you. You can uh, sell it on eBay for five euros, you know, with this special signature. So um, the reason I wrote the book is because, you know, I'm, I'm a futurist. I've been speaking for roughly 15 years about the future, and the last five years, the most common question I get anywhere in the world is how are we going to remain human in the world that is becoming a giant machine, essentially. You know, technology is so powerful now, and so good, right, convenient, right, that it's very tempting that we become technology. Right. There's a lot of debate, and you know, Americans think about this a little bit differently, uh, Chinese as well, and here in Europe we are very humanistic, uh, that's, that's our background. So it's a, it's a very big question. So the book is trying to answer some of this, and as I was listening to the previous presentation, I can't help but thinking that, you know, this these machines that all of us now have are essentially our second brain, right? They are our external brain. We keep phone numbers and dating and, and uh, stock reports and money and very soon the health records, everything. Right? But technology is actually, you know, if we, if, we do, if we see what we do today, it's very good at little happiness, you know, hedonic happiness. I can call my son in, in Africa for free on WhatsApp, you know, that's great, right? I can watch a great movie, I can read something interesting. But does that have anything to do with actual happiness? In the Buddhist sense, contentment, right? I mean, for us, you know, the most thing that makes people happy is engagement with others, right? Relationships, experiences. And, and these things can provide experiences, right? Right now, they're still pretty bad, you know, providing real experiences. But the future holds that basically these machines become so powerful that they can pro provide actual experience to our brain. Yeah. That sounds a lot like a drug, huh? doesn't it? Yeah. So it's interesting, you know, that, that whole uh, discussion about where we're going is essentially centered on, on various things. You know, the exponential curve that you've been probably aware of for a long time, uh, Moore's Law, Metcalfe's Law, uh, didn't really matter very much until now because we're now at the pivot point of this. Right? We're at the point where all the stuff that was science fiction is becoming real. Not all, but language translation, autonomous vehicles, the shift to renewable energy, speech, uh, speech understanding, language shifting, all of these things. So basically, we're at four. In the next couple of years, roughly five, six years, it's 128. And if you go 30 times up the scale, right, a billion. Three times up the scale, that would be like 40, 50 years, a billion. It's impossible to imagine what we would do then. Right? I mean, as to the previous speaker, you know, two seconds later. <laughs> so now, basically, what we're seeing around us uh, is this whole idea that we're essentially also in a world where it's not just about one thing. It's about a dozen things. Genome engineering, cloud computing, intelligent assistance. Uh, all of the things that we watch every day, robotics, artificial intelligence, smart cities, and so on. It's basically the combination of those things. Right? So if you're in business today, your world is exponential. It is combinatorial, which means combining different things, and it's interdependent. So just 10 years ago, you could afford to take a view that says, let's wait and see, as we do in Switzerland. Right? We're experts at wait and see. Uh, of course, we want to minimize risk. Right? Americans are experts at creating what you see. Right? It's a cultural thing. Yeah. We observe and then we slowly copy it or we, we come in when it's safe. Right? This strategy will not work here. I mean, our future is not linear. It's hard for us to understand. It is not just one thing, it's 50 things. Right? And we have to think holistically. So that requires a lot of energy, a lot of thinking about where this could be going. And I think the bottom line really is for us, the challenge is this, right? We are just mere humans. We are linear. We do learn a few things, occasionally. We do improve, we do get older. You know, we get more healthy, all true. But we're never ever going to keep up with technology. 
And right now, tech is still at a place to where you can, if, you, if you speak to a computer, most of the time it doesn't get what you're saying. But then just a few years, game over. In five, seven years, right, moving towards what's called the singularity, we can forget competing with a machine on pretty much anything. Driving, flying an airplane, researching legal documents. The only thing a computer will never have is existence. What in the book I call the androrhythms, you know, the human things. For example, when we speak, or when I speak to a customer, most important things that the customer is saying, he's not actually saying. It's between the lines. I realize I talk to a customer that's unhappy, but he never told me, you know, I'm so unhappy. But I still get it. That's very hard for a computer. And that is what is our future. I mean, clearly, you know, bookkeeping, accounting, financial records, combining information. That's computer territory. So we're moving into a world where machines are exponential and humans are not. And that is a good thing. And this is why I believe it's completely wrong to think about us becoming exponential. You know, as we see, as we see uh, presented in the singularity movement and transhumanism. Right? When we become exponential, we become this, right? a machine. We can want that and we can discuss it, you know, I, I, I don't think that's a good idea because when we become exponential, we would lose what makes us humans, which is inefficiency. Mistakes, lying, emotions, death. Right? We kill two million people with cars a year. Doesn't mean we should not drive a car. Well, it would be efficient, right? And, you know, I don't care about driving a car, so I'm fine with that. Right? But should we, for example, not give birth with human bodies, we should give birth outside of the body because it's safer. Right? There are people proposing this, called the exogenesis. That sounds crazy, right? But if it's all about efficiency, we wouldn't exist. 